Father, Father, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father God, we forever give you the praise. Lord God, and as you come uh, at this hour, <clears throat> that you will be with us as we uh, uh, preach thy word, that these words will become your words, and my words be, and your words will become my words. And Lord God, we forever praise you, honor and give, give you the glory. And Lord God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you, you conf confirm thy words with signs, wonders, and workings, and miracles, oh God, because you are God and you are God all by yourself. And we just thank you and we just say hallelujah. Glory to your name in the mighty and majestic name of Jesus. And all the people said, Amen. 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 If you will, turn with me to a very familiar passage of scripture. The 23rd number of Psalms. The 23rd number of Psalms. And we'll see if we can get some fresh waters from an old dove well. And it reads, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the house of the Lord forever. Those who have to hear, let me hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. Amen. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A message for this morning is chilling with God. Amen. Chilling with God. There were a lot of times through our life transitions and as we go through life changes and, and uh, we meet people in our lives sometimes, uh, people, all they want to do is just to chill out and to chill with their boot. They want to chill with their spouses, they want to chill out with their friends, they want to chill out with their family. But every once in a while, people, we need to sometimes, we need to just chill with God. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, with, with life, uh, 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 swift transitions and, 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 and the way the, the, the Psalms had, had, had uh, uh, wrote this Psalms and the chronological order in which he had written a psalm that indicates to me, or the text indicates that the psalmist has spent a lot of time with God and ultimately that God has became a, a personal God. And he has a personal relationship with God. And you know, if we if we desire, if we desire to have a closer relationship with God, if we want to have some intimate relationship with God, every once in a while we need to just chill out with God. Amen. So 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 the psalmist, the psalmist here, David had 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 now he, he his older in, in age, he had uh he went through different stages in life that he started out as a, a shepherd, uh Shepherd, and he he uh, fought lions and bears, and he was uh, anointed uh, as being a, a king of, of, uh, of Israel, and the many battles that he had fought, and 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 when uh, 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 how the the um, the Ark of the Covenant, the Philistines was victorious and had the Ark of the Covenant, and then when when David ended up. Uh, as king, the Ark of the Covenant was returned, and and how he was, um, how he had to defend himself or even flee from his son Absalom, who ultimately was trying to to kill him and to take over the kingdom, and how that 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 uh, we see that how that that David and uh, committed adultery with Bathsheba, and they had a 
child that was born and ultimately that child ended up dying so we see that throughout the life of David that David uh, 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 um, uh, had some, some, some good times and he had some bad times but he realized through the uh, transitions of life that God has always been right there. And, and how many of us, how many of us go through the, through the transition of life that, that different stages in our lives that we didn't think that God was around, but as we look back over our lives, we realize that God has always been right there. So the psalmist, so the psalmist, so the psalmist was, was one who was after God's own heart. And, and, and he reflected on all that God has, has done for him and how uh, yet that um, uh, through it all that God was right there with him. So, so, so he, he'd been in different places in his life, but he realized that the best place to be is to be chilling with God. The best place that he realized to be was to be in the presence of God. And I think I need to share notice with the people is that there is no better place to be than to be in the presence of the Lord. So the psalmist reflected, uh, he, he, he's uh, up in age and he reflected on uh, the things that God, he reflected on the things that he had come through in his life. And, and he said that, and he started the psalms out by saying, said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, so you see, he, he had those personal pronouns into acknowledging that God, he had a, a relationship with God. He said, my, throughout the psalms, he talked about my shepherd and I wanted my soul and, and uh, he talked about uh uh, I will not fear no personal pronouns uh, in the case that, that he didn't have confidence in himself but he had confidence in God because all that he has gone through he realized that God was the one who had brought him through. So, so he said the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. So he acknowledged God as being his shepherd and you know when, when, what shepherd does with sheep he, they don't the, the the shepherd they don't drive the sheep but they lead the sheep to where they want them to go and, and so he would acknowledge him as his shepherd because the shepherds are the ones that took care of their sheep no matter what was going on the shepherd always took care of the sheep so so the psalmist realized that that it was the Lord that, that had, had taken uh, uh, care of him. And I think I need to share a notice with you this morning is that uh, the God will take care of his own. No matter what your situation is or where you are going, what you have been through, God, he will take care of you. God will take care of his own. God, if he has his eyes on a sparrow, you know that he has his eyes on you. You see, you don't get to this point in life and this relationship with God uh, just by the fact of the matter that you are saved and sanctified. You see, you have to go through some things to realize that it was God who has been there. You know, there's too many people that that uh, that have not realized uh, or too many people yet have not gone through, but they want to uh, acknowledge God and uh, they have all this faith. But I think I need to share notice with you this morning is that uh, true faith is tested faith. How will we know that God can solve a problem if we never had a problem that he's able to solve? You see, that's how we end up being more than conquerors because the problem that we have is bigger than we are and we cannot conquer it. We can only conquer. We can only conquer. We can only conquer be more than conquer because Christ that is in us allow us to be that uh, he is the one who do the conquering for us. You see you see sometimes there are some things in our lives that we don't have any control over but yet if we have given our lives to Christ that he is the one who will uh, give us the victory. So he said the Lord is my shepherd that I shall not I want, which ultimately means he realized that God was his sole provider. Yeah. 
you'll see, you'll see some of us uh, are some people are self-righteous and they got their jobs, they got their degrees and they figure that everything that they have they got on their own but I think I need to share notice with you uh, this morning is uh, that when God, uh, he's your sole provider, everything you have came from him. So he owns, uh, he owns everything, he owns the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. So everything that we have, it belongs to God and God wants us to be stewards. So we, he said, I shall not want in saying that God will supply your every need. How many of us know that God will supply your every need? And not only will he supply your every need, but every once in a while, he will give you some of those things that you want. You know, I shall, I want would mean that, that he will be there with you, that, that every, anything that you need, he will supply. You remember how Jesus was uh, uh, there in the wilderness and he had 5,000 people following him and they was hungry. And there was a lad there with uh, two fishes and five barley loaves of bread and Jesus uh, bless their bread and give thanks and gave thanks for their fish and he started pulling fish out of fish and bread out of bread to meet the needs of those people and I dare to say you know when you reflect on your life when you didn't know where your next meal was going to come from but next thing you know there's somebody knocking at your door with a bag of roses is there anybody here that knows that the Lord will provide all of your needs you see, you see, it's not only you know, you know, you know, you know that he not only will supply you with tangible things, uh, but he also will supply you with spiritual things. Uh, you know, there are so many people in our world uh, uh, who are looking for this uh, to be fulfilled spiritually. They got an emptiness on the inside, and I think I need to share notice uh, that only one that can fill that void in your life, that void. In your heart is Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can fill that void in your life. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So then, so then, he, 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 the psalmist, he realized that, that God is his shepherd and he shall not want, but, and, and then, then he, he realized, he looking back, he said that the, uh, he making me to lie down in, in the creek pastures. Uh, he leading me besides the still waters. Uh, so not only is God his provider, but he also is his preserver. Uh, you see, the psalmist is saying that, that all the God had, had uh, 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 supplied his every need. He said, I shall not want a pasture in this context, context meaning that he's fat, that he's full. You, you see, with God, with God supply your every need, that, that he will also Meaning, put you down in a pasture. He said, he making me to lie down in green pasture, which means uh, that he will give you peace uh, even after the fact that he will make you to lie down in peace. You look, look at, look at, you look at, you you can see, you can see how it is. Uh, you can see he said, the Lord is my shepherd. And you know how uh, if you uh, confuse your mind that you have this uh, green pasture uh, and and you have these mountains on, on every side, but you have these green pastures, and you have these uh, 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 sheep just lying down in the green pasture, and don't have a worry in the world, and I tell you people that we have God on your side, uh, he will lead you, he will make you lie down in a green pasture. You know, sometimes we don't have sense enough to sit down, so sometimes he has to make you sit down and have some peace in your life. How many of us know that we need some peace in our lives? Amen. God will give you some peace in your life. He will make you lie down in green pastures and, 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 and then then and then he will uh, lead you beside still waters. Uh, you know, not no turbulence water, not no water that uh, 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 making a whole lot of noise, but some still 
still waters, peaceful waters, so you will have total peace. Uh, and you know, God will give you that peace that goes beyond our understanding. And the only way we go find that peace uh, is we have that peace in God. Uh, I've seen, you know, you know, sometimes, sometimes, uh, you know, God, he just wants you to be still uh, and be enjoying uh, in his presence. Uh, he just wants you to chill out with him sometimes. Uh, he will lead you beside the still water. He will make you lie down in green pastures uh, to where there is peace, there is calm. No worry in the world, I tell you. That's why the psalmist says, the Lord, uh, the him uh, uh, under his wings. Uh, you see, when you're under the wings or the shadows of God, uh, you can't have nothing but peace uh, because he will shield you from everything that's going on around you, all around the world. Uh, and then and, and, and he will ease uh, a troubling mind. Uh, how many of us here know that God will ease uh, your troubling mind? That God will give you peace uh, even in the midst of your storms. Uh, he led him by still waters. So then, so then, so then, uh, uh, the psalmist, uh, he reflected on the times that, that even that uh, uh, he might have backslidden. And, and he said, God said that he restores my soul. Uh, you see, I mean, we, we're not always, uh, we're not always uh, on the right path. But sometimes God will, he will restore you. He will refresh you. He will give you a, a, a newness. He will give you, restore you uh, into his presence. He will restore you uh, back in unto um, himself. Uh, you know, he said he will restore my soul. And, and uh, uh, he said, he lead me in the path of righteousness. Not for our sake, but for his name's sake. You see, you see, you see, you see. When you when you uh, uh, go away from the church in front of the presence of God, He He has ways to bring you back in unto Himself. Uh, that He will restore you. Is there anybody here who knows that God will restore you? Uh, is there anybody, anyone here who knows that God will refresh you? Uh, you know, sometimes life can take a toll on you, uh, and you don't know which way to go, you're tossing and turning all night long, but then God uh, will restore your soul. Uh, yeah, how many of us know that he will put his arms around you and, and rock you right on the sleep? Uh, and then he just you wake up in the morning, uh, you pray that you read his word, and you, you wake up in the morning, you just feel refreshed. Uh, and sometimes you feel like you could take on the world. Uh, sometimes you feel like you take on everything that that's going on, but, but it's because of God that he restored your soul. So then, so then, so then, uh, he said, uh, uh, he restores my soul. So God is a restorer. He he will restore you. He re we not only will uh, he restore your, your your tangible or your material thing, but he will restore you spiritually. If you, I heard Jesus said that uh, I come and mend the broken heart. So how many of us know that God will mend your broken heart? God will. Uh, uh, restore your peace. God will restore your love. God will restore because he is a restorer. Yes, so then, so then, so then, uh, uh, he say, uh, for his name, he lead him in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Uh, you see, so so when you start, uh, uh, go off road, to go off, uh, get off track, you know, God, he will bring you back on the right track for his name's sake. You see, we represent when you are a believer of God, when you are born again, when you have been regenerated, that does not necessarily mean you're going to be perfect. But when you are when you are on the wrong path, he will lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake because we are a representative of who he is. We are an ambassador.
uh, for who are for God and for the kingdom of God. And when people see us not doing, uh, not doing what we're supposed to be doing, uh, and that he will lead us back in the path of righteousness because he don't want no shame brought to his name. How many of us know there are a lot of people out here that will bring the shame to the name of God. But he will lead you back on the path of righteousness for his name's sake, for Jehovah's sake, for his name's sake, for Jesus' sake. So then, so then, so then, so then, uh, uh, he, uh, the Psalms just kept on reflecting. And you know, that's what we need to do sometimes. We need to just sit down and reflect on what God has done for us. Now look at this. Now look at this. There in um, uh, uh, verse 4, the psalmist said, he said, yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadows of death, I will fear no evil for thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know, you know he, he said, yeah, he was excited. He was almost excited before we, he went through the valleys and the shadows of death. What is that saying is that when you are in that dark place in life and there seems to be fear, you know how it is to be fear in darkness. What it is, you can have fear in the uncertainties. You can have fear uh, in that area that you don't know what the outcome is going to be. But he even said, even though, he said, yeah, even though I walk through the valley and the shadows of death. Now check this out, check this out. You may be in the valley, but you're not there to stay. Because the psalm said, as I walk through the valley. So, so, so that dark place that you're in, you are not there for eternity. You're not there forever. You're you see the psalmist said uh, uh, weeping may endure for a night uh, but joy cometh in the morning. Uh, yes. So you know when joy cometh there is a new beginning uh, when joy cometh. Uh, we experience new mercy. You're not there to stay in the valley forever. You're not there to stay in the valley but you are going through the valley uh, where yes you may be in a dark place uh, but the there is light at the end of the tunnel. But observe this. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. You see, you see, he got a, he, uh, first of all, he was a provider, and then uh, uh, he was a preserver, and then he was a restorer, but now he is a protector. You may be in that dark place, but you're not there all by yourself. For I hear, this, uh, I hear Jesus saying, he said, no, I am with you always, uh, even unto the end of the world. And he said, I am with you. He's not saying that I'm not with you as uh, until trouble comes. Uh, He's with you when you go through your troubles. Uh, He's with you in peace time. He's with you in trouble time. Uh, He's with you when uh, you feel like you're not the best you could be. Uh, He's right there with you. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm glad that God is always right there. So then, so then he said, as I walk through the valley and the shadows of death, you see, he thought about all of the battles he went through against the Philistines, against the Syrians, against the Hittites and the Canaanites. And he said, but thou art with me. He think of God in the context of a shepherd. He said, thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Now check this out. Now check this out. You see a shepherd that he carried two instruments. One was a stab and it was tall and it curled at the end. And he used that stab. But then there was a rod that was thick and it was crooked. You see, so he carried two sticks. A stab and a rod. You see, he used a stab to guide his sheep. And he used a rod to fight off the enemy. I 
how many of us know uh, that God will fight off your enemies. Uh, you don't have to fight some battles. Uh, the battle is not yours. Uh, it is the Lord's. Uh, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, I'd rather fall behind the staff of God uh, and then to be under that rock. So that rod, he will fight your enemies. So, so the staff, the shepherd, uh, uh, used the rod uh, to fight off any lions, uh, to fight off any wolves uh, that come up against his sheep. Uh, and I think I need to share notice with you uh, that God will fight your enemies. Uh, he will run your enemy off. Uh, he will run the devil off uh, uh, with that rod. Uh, and so then uh, he said, I am comfort uh, because you are guiding me. Uh, and you are protecting me, thy rod and thy staff. And then he thought about this. He thought about this. He said, with that rod, you fight off the enemies. But then he came around and said, thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You know the enemies, uh, you know, when you're surrounded by the enemies, uh, the way he prepared a table in your presence before you, uh, in the presence of your enemies, uh, mean you have divine favor. Uh, how many of us know uh, that God will bless you uh, uh, right there in the presence of your enemies? Uh, and those who will come around uh, the meant for your demise, uh, God will bless you uh, uh, in the presence of your of your enemies. He will let them know that this is my child. He will let them know that he will prepare this table right in their present. So then, uh, uh, as he is uh, 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 fixing this table in the presence of the enemies, uh, there are all but onlookers. Uh, that's why you don't need uh, to try to prove anything uh, uh, to your haters. Uh, you see, God is going to bless you in spite of your enemy. How many of us know uh, that God will uh, uh, bless you in the spite of your enemies? Uh, is there anybody here that knows? that God will bless you in the midst of your enemies. So you don't have to wait until trouble is over. You don't have to wait till the enemy flee before God will bless you. Now check this, now check this. Not only did he prepare a table in the presence of his enemy, but he said, thou anointed my head with oil and my cup runneth over. So thank God now only bless you in the presence of your enemies. Uh, but you have to find favor so uh, until you have anoint your head with oil. Uh, until your cup start running over. Uh, you'll see that God bless you so uh, until you just can't hold all your blessings. Uh, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you that when you are around a child of God uh, and God is blessing that person, uh, you ought to get around that person uh, because their cup is running over and if their cup is running over you ought to act like you the salsa and you ought to get some of that oil you ought to get some of the old blessings you ought to get some of the, the anointing that God is pouring out on this believer her cup is running over which means they have to give away some of the old blessings they have to give away some of the old things and now only not only uh, does that mean uh, that uh, that uh, their cup is running over, but it also uh, not only means tangible things uh, or material things, uh, but it also means spiritual things. Uh, you know, he had an answer uh, at the way your peace is overflowing. Uh, he went an answer uh, until your love is running over. He went an answer uh, until your joy is running over. How many of us know about that joy? Uh, is a really right here uh, who knows about the joy of the Lord. Uh, you see, it's that joy uh, that the world didn't give it to you, uh, and the world cannot take it away. Uh, yes, uh, so then uh, he said, My cup uh, is running over. Uh, and then uh, he said, He realized uh, that, um, uh, that, uh, that there is no better place uh, than to be in the presence of the Lord. Uh, he said, Surely, uh, goodness and mercy uh, shall follow me uh, all the days uh, of my life. Uh, and I will uh, uh, dwell in the house of the Lord uh, forever. Uh, in other words, uh, you know how then uh, can we get uh, into the house of the Lord? Uh, you see, 
is not just dealing with uh, these four walls, uh, but sin uh, is all about uh, uh, what to do outside of here. Uh, that uh, that uh, you don't have to wait uh, on Sunday mornings uh, to give him the praise. Uh, you don't have to wait uh, until Sunday mornings uh, to worship him. Uh, you don't have to wait uh, until Sunday mornings uh, until uh, you are dwelling uh, uh, in his presence uh, wherever you are. Uh, you ought to worship God uh, wherever you are. Uh, you ought to give him the praise uh, because his presence uh, is the best place to be uh, uh, in his presence. Uh, we'll make a difference. Uh, is there anybody here uh, know that the presence of God uh, uh, will make a difference uh, uh, in your life or uh, uh, in his presence uh, uh, there is love or uh, uh, in his presence uh, uh, there is peace or uh, uh, in his presence uh, uh, there is joy uh, uh, I will uh, uh, dwell in his house uh, uh, forever uh, uh, Sarah or anybody here just want to chill out with God if you chill out with him or everything will be all right chill it out with God just to be in his presence say I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and that means to have forever been in his presence. Amen. As, and, and forever give him the praise, the honor, the glory, to worship him in his presence. Yes, yes. So it's not as they did in the Old Testament, where they had a temple, Solomon's temple, where they had the outer porch. Yes, then they had the holy place. Yes. Then they had the most holy place, where the presence of God dwelled. And the only person who was able to enter into the most holy place was a priest to offer sacrifice. But I tell you people that since Jesus died on the cross and was risen from the grave that early that Sunday morning, that uh, you could enter into his presence anytime you want. For Peter said, come ye boldly unto the throne of God. We are extending an invitation. We are extending an invitation. 